Hi there, thanks so much for tuning in to this quick video all about getting your digital affairs in order. Now, the average American has over 100 discrete accounts and logins that they use on a regular basis. I know I do. I mean, we all live on these things these days. And there's everything from social media to applications that do, that interface with certain stores to if you blog, there's all kinds of data and information and cash that's out there that's associated with these special kinds of digital assets and not necessarily associated with traditional uh, banking accounts that we think of. So as an estate planning attorney, I love helping families work through how to address these things so that their family will have as smooth a transition as they can, not only with the traditional assets, but also with these very important digital assets. My name's Alex Meeks. I'm an attorney and the owner and founder of Acorn Law, a law firm dedicated to helping busy families get their affairs in order. Now, when it comes to digital assets, I have three tips that I'm gonna share with you today. The first tip I have is make sure, especially for some of these bigger accounts that you have, that you're checking out the legacy settings. So two big ones that come to mind are Facebook and Google. Both of these offer settings. You can go into the program itself and, and designate who you would like to be in charge of your account in the instance that you're not available to do so. And you can set parameters to how that's gonna look. So this is gonna be, if it's available for your applications, your most surefire way of ensuring that there's a smooth transition and that your wishes are honored. So check it out for those big ones. And if it's available, take advantage of it. My second big tip for today, tip number two, is to utilize digital asset clauses in your legacy planning documents. So hopefully you have already sat down and prepared your legacy planning package. This is going to be your power of attorney and your will or your trust are the two that are going to where you're going to have um, digital asset clauses that are going to come into play. Take a look at your will and see if it has language in there about your personal representative having the authority to access and make changes to, et cetera, your digital assets. Uh, there's a uniform law that's been passed in almost all the states. It's gonna be slightly different in each state, but there will be some sort of a provision that allows your estate planning attorney to put language in there that can help you to transition these assets smoothly. So check it out. You might already have it in there, and if you don't, give a call to your estate planning lawyer and talk to them about adding this important planning to your documents. So in addition to your will, like I said, you're gonna to need to make sure that language is in your power of attorney because in the instance that you're really unwell or you're not able to log in or manage things, there can be things that come up and it'll be super important that your agent is able legally to uh, access those things and make changes as they may need to be made. All right. My third tip is really more of a practical one than a legal one. It's to make sure that you have a really solid system to make sure that your loved ones can locate and access all these accounts. As I said at the outset, the average American has a lot of digital assets. So you're gonna wanna make sure you have a way for your family to know what you have out there. Um, all the digital asset clause language in the world isn't going to help if your family doesn't know which of these accounts they're looking for. So I always include a memorandum where clients can fill in this kind of information and keep that tucked away in their legacy planning package. Um, whether that means for you a pen and paper list of all of your accounts, or if it's something a little more nuanced, some clients use um, a password vault or something like that. Um, there's probably other ways to handle this. Whatever it is that works well for your family, make sure that you take care of it. And then also importantly, maybe once a year on your birthday or at the end of the year, whenever you decide, um, come back and check it and make sure that you're adding new things on there. Um, Cause you're gonna wanna make sure that practically that your loved ones have the login information so that they're actually, in addition to being legally allowed to access things that they're practically able to. All right, those are my three big tips. If you take care of those, then you're gonna be ahead of the pack because this is an area that a lot of people really aren't paying a lot of attention to yet. But 
it's super important. I hope you've enjoyed this quick video uh, and these tips about digital estate planning and that you found some value today from what I've shared. If you have, I hope that you'll take a moment to share this with someone else who might benefit from hearing about digital estate planning. And if you live in Maryland or New York, please consider visiting my website. You're gonna find more information that's relevant to you and your legacy planning needs there. You'll also find access to a free workbook where you can download that can get you started thinking about some important legacy planning ideas. And if you're ready to start working on it, please uh, make an appointment right on my website. I'd love to talk to you and I'd love to help.